Amazing first set of speakers here. All the human nuances of behavior and psychology seem to come together with the kind of the big data analytics. So where little data meets big data, well, you, you heard it first here. We don't really focus on big data. What we do focus on, as well as applying behavioral insights, is actually measuring the effect of what we are doing. We were originally set up with a two-year sunset clause. The default being, which is in itself is a behavioral insight, so changing the defaults, the default being that if after two years we hadn't met certain uh, targets, we would be shut down. Um, luckily, we met those targets. So what are behavioral insights? I've kind of already alluded to it, and this slide just shows you um, the four big hitters of the kind of popular literature surrounding it. If you want people to do something, um, make it easy, make it attractive, make it timely, and make it social. Now, to begin with, there was a lot of skepticism about whether anything we did was going to work at all. So we changed letters, and then we saw what the effect was. So this was the letter originally. So we changed the letter, and all we did was we made it much shorter. So our general rule of thumb is a letter should be on one page. Um, right up the front, it should be clear what you want people to do. And these are the results from our new letter. You know, my vision of how do you make data very useful is you actually show how the data can be used to solve problems, as opposed to computing, which, which at that time very much directed that you needed all of the data all of the time. Statistics allowed us to look at some of the data, some of the time. And Tesco had just launched and was trialing Clubcard. And suddenly the data that was coming out of this store card was so huge, they found that they actually couldn't analyse it or process it. The IT industry um, advised Tesco back in 1995, £50 million and three years to actually capture, process and make useful knowledge from this data. Our solution, uh, 10 weeks, and quarter of a million pounds. So this new marketing premise, very, very powerful, became you are where you live, you are what you eat. We're now looking at you are who you follow. We think social media data is the very interesting data of now. Relevancy is probably the most important word. But relevance at that moment. At that moment, at that moment exactly. The immediacy of relevance. Well, when customers understand why you know something or why you might need to know it, there's kind of a more relaxed environment. I think the moment that we are having um, our footprint or our fingerprint taken and we don't know the value of what we're getting back, that's when we get extremely uncomfortable. A very powerful motivator for people's behaviour is what other people do. So another trial we did on tax letters was telling people that 9 out of 10 people pay their tax on time, which is true. Um, so we, we just told people about this and actually that increased the tax compliance rates on those people receiving letters. Ipsos Mori ran a survey in Manchester asking people if we told you that 9 out of 10 people paid your tax, would, would that make any difference? And everybody said no. There is a way of presenting data to change people's behaviour. We're using social media as a kind of watching agent. So we're calling it now casting. So what we can see is how people live their life right now. I think data visualisation is probably one of the most exciting things to come. Please will you join me in thanking an amazing panel. So mesmerising, they are. Thank you. Thank you.